everybody, and welcome back to Joygasm, a video game and movie podcast. I'm Russ, Xbox Live Toaster 360. He is Steve, Xbox Live, Steve Avich. And we both want to wish, wish, wish each and every one of you a happy July 4th in episode 230 today, July 1st, 2021. We have a bit of a fun show in store for you today, but before we get started, make sure you massage that subscribe button, maybe even percolate that little notification bell, that way you will not miss a single episode of Joygasm, which drops each week on both YouTube and your favorite podcast provider. Having said that, we're going to be catching up with each other really quick before going right into our topic of the day which is, in this case, movie trailer impressions, which you can fast forward to if you look at the timestamps located in the detailed section below. Steve, yet another week has gone by, and now we are on the verge, the cusp, of being able to wish the United States a happy birthday. Yes. A very colorful day it is, mm. Russ. Agreed. Uh, it's all. It's a day we can all celebrate and smell a bunch of gunpowder blowing up, ash in our face. Lots of traffic coming back from going to the fair, watching fireworks. Absolutely. Although I will not be uh, unfortunately able to participate this year in for me. fireworks, just because I have a wedding to go to, but. The little lady who is destined to become a missus is a very sweet and special gal, so I'm very happy to be able to participate, partake. I'm sure you'll have sparklers. Bear witness. Hey, I didn't think about that. Maybe Mm -hmm. we will. Mm -hmm. A little something, something. (laughs) But what's to do with you? Russ. Um, I and the wife and the chihuahua have all been playing Resident Evil. Really? Village. Has the Chihuahua all of a sudden uh, barked at the enemies on screen? No, but she doesn't like the tension. I will say that. <laughs> she can sense the tension between can, you and your wife? Can, yeah, she can sense the tension. So what happens is she'll she'll get onto the chair with us and, and you know just find a little nook and just cuddle in there. Uh, but there's so much yelling and screaming going on. Not like screaming like, ah! Well, I mean, there's yelling, but it's like, no, over there, over there, no, just go right, go right, go left, whatever. And the dog's like, I'm having enough of this. This is too <laughs> The dog intense. starts so shaking. Yeah, well, well, like one time the dog went downstairs, lights are all off downstairs, and she went down there and just like hung out in a little bed, not even in the room, nothing, just like hunkered down by herself away from all of the commotion, like she couldn't handle it. So um, anyhow, my wife likes scary movies and it's when we were dating we were playing resident evil uh on like five i think it was okay five and six and uh we had a blasty blast with that i'm quoting you by the way mm. blasty blast um and so it's been quite a few minutes i didn't know that she had watched you play one of the resident evil titles in the past i thought this was her first no foray definitely not the first foray um but this it, it has been it has been wonderful. So, so she hasn't she's gotten into it after Castle Dimitri uh, uh, D- uh, D- D- uh, Say it again. I don't know how to say it, Rose. I, I believe it is pronounced Dimitrisk. Sure, I'll, I'll Lady Dimitrisk because she is French, Francaise. I'll take it. Anyhow, so she started watching after that, and. It has been a lot of fun. We are making our way through it. Mm. I have gathered pretty much every little piece of rusted scrap metal I can find. And somehow I'm (laughs) able to carry all of it. Tons and tons and tons of scrap metal. But I can't shove seven more handgun bullets in my pocket. You know? Nope. Nope. I can't do it. Um, I don't know. I just... Despite having befuddles me, three fingers on one hand yeah. to boot, right? So, anyhow, um, I have a lot of ammo. I've been using the knife like crazy wherever yeah. I can. I've been doing the same thing too, and I literally cannot show. I I haven't even 
made, I haven't custom made any ammo or crafted, I should say. I haven't crafted any ammo. Anyhow, this is, this is one, this is the first game where you actually can, you have to like hunt down farm animals to make meals. Correct. Too. Yes. And it actually sounds kind of good when he's making it. And mm. You kind of wonder like, dude, this dude's pretty fat and sick. But Reminds you of Sea of Thieves a little bit, doesn't it? A little bit. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's kind of odd that you feel bad for the chickens. You feel bad for the pig. I don't feel bad for the goat, really. Makes me wonder if they went to like a local Benny Hanna's and just did some audio recording there. Yeah. And you can kind of hear that little tick, tick, tick of the of the igniter with it, like a little gas stove. Yeah. Like, what? He doesn't have a gas stove in there. He little, does not. A little cling, a little clang. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like it. Um. So anyhow, I am at... I've seen what's his, what's the guy's face? Um, the dude with the hat. I know who t- like the Van Helsing looking guy. Yeah, and anyway, I I saw the little scene with him. He kicked me down a hole, mm-hmm. and I I just ran away from the propeller head dude. You're right, which made me think. I wonder if Capcom was listening to the propeller heads. While they were making this game, and they thought, "Hmm, this could be a beast." I think I, th- I think it's a little bit of a stretch. Ah, uh, could be. I like where your head's at, but I think it's a little <laughs> bit of a stretch, Steve. <laughs> First time I saw that guy, I was like, "Whoa! Like, what am I gonna do? I don't know." But there's a hallway, and I'm gonna run through it. So now you are officially deep in the bowels of his factory. Yes. Yeah, you're gonna be there a while. Great. There's. It's. It's not like a, a quick run through of that. That's actually probably one of the longest areas. If I were to compare it to the other regions or territories, I would say it's probably just as long when you're in the castle, maybe even longer. It just kind of depends on how skilled you are at navigating through that. But it's, I mean, it's a corridor and a half. Man. So, well, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah. As you make your way through that. I, I have been the 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 fishy dude was was pretty easy. I thought it just was intense there for a minute, and then the doll. Once I got like the hang of it after the that mid boss that you couldn't do anything about. Um, the, the big the, abomination man. known as the baby. But the 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 big guy who was the head of the lichens. Yes, he was a bit tough. I was sniper rifling him in the face quite a few times throwing off a bunch of landmines but i the but before him there was like 30 lichens that was jumping out of everywhere and i'm like just trying to pump shotgun everybody to like load as fast as i can i started throwing pipe bombs i had a lot of inventory after that part Uh uh-huh i bet you did i I think we all do yeah Uh, Because throughout the game, I'm like trying to really accurately like headshot these lichens and like like, two, maybe three shots and they're done. I have like over 200 rounds for for the handgun anyway. Well, and that's one of the strengths I feel like that the game has is it does a nice balance between the tried and true Resident Evil style of what you just described, where like they're, um, you know, you're, you're trying to conserve your, your ammunition, you're using your knife when and if possible. And actually, one of the things I like a lot about this game, too, is that the knife never breaks. It's not right. like other Resident Evils were yeah, like, oh, right. you can stab a zombie three or four times and then it just breaks. It just got dull. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but in this case, you actually have the knife from start to finish, and I think that's great. Yeah. And then on top of that is the pacing. Like, you you get to the part like you just described and you're like whoa this is totally different but at the same time it's exhilarating because you're like oh okay well oh, i gotta change up my tactics here this is this is way more intense in a different way you know so it, I'm, I'm glad that you were making your way through it and i just can't wait until you get to the very end then we can actually uh you know yeah. do some some final yeah. thoughts action on it i haven't used the the magnum yet but it i don't that's all i'm gonna say don't use it. Don't use it. I suggest you save it. Okay. Well, I feel cool that I can bestow upon him a little Resident Evil tip, seeing as he's the Resident uh, Evil pro. It's funny because the, the Magnum ammo is like this big pouch. Like, oh, here's some Magnum ammo. We're like, oh, great. How much did I get? Three rounds. <laughs> big pouch. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, sure. 
Yes. I'm doing you a solid, Steve. Yeah. Save it. Save it. Yeah. Anything else going on with you? No. No, not at all. No. Well, I have a couple of things. Uh, first of all, one of which that you actually kind of, uh, in a social media kind of way, bared witness to. Sure. So tonight, I was grilling marinated salmon for the family. And there was a massive thunderstorm that came through. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm just one of those types of guys that come rain or shine, I'm going to grill. If I'm grilling, I'm going to grill. And I have grilled in many different types of weather patterns and climates and whatnot. And I tell you, that was pretty intense. <laughs> and what I ended up doing was I was recording myself on my phone. Um, just, just because, um, we have a friend who's based up in Washington who has been pretty curious as to like what the weather is like in Texas. And so I've been periodically giving various little short video clips showing me, Oh, it's raining. look, we have green grass, that sort of thing. And so I thought, Oh, it'd be fun to like do another one of these and show what a thunderstorm looks like. So it was one of those funny situations where I'm just talking and I'm being silly and stuff. And the thunderstorm keeps getting closer and closer and there's no way like it could be timed any better. In fact, I think you even mentioned in the comments on Facebook about how the timing on that couldn't have been more perfect. Well, I thought it'd be fun to be able to talk to you once more about uh, the rain situation, just in case you were still kind of curious about whether or not Texas gets a lot of rain or not, <laughs> especially in the summertime. <laughs> but uh, I'm out here grilling some salmon, some marinated salmon. You want to take a look? Real tasty. I'll be having some salad and grapes to go along with it. But uh, it becomes kind of um, the norm sometimes when, uh, you know, you want to grill, you're going to grill. You're not going to wait until it's nice and blue skies out. No, no. No, no. (sighs) Come rain or shine, come snow or lightning. We're going to grill. It's a lot of fun, actually. One of the things about grilling in Texas is you sometimes, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, what is it? It is officially July 1st. And due to the rainstorm, the thunderstorm, whatever you want to call it, uh, feels like it's about 70 degrees. It's real nice. Hey, look, you can get yourself a nice light show. Felt my butthole pucker on that one. (laughs) Ah. But the grilling must go on. That's right. The grilling must go on. Yeah, no, I was out. So we had a flicker of of uh, power loss, and the uh, upstairs was not powered on, but that downstairs ended up being powered on. So yeah. I'm like, okay, I got to go flip a switch somewhere, and so I go out in the garage, and I had to lift, you know, push, pull the garage up uh, to get in the where the fuse box was, and then the the garage was. Litted or light it lighted lit lit lit, lit. 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 <laughs> so lit bruh um, motion and, and so I'm I'm out there and I'm like okay yeah, this is the uh, AC and this is the dishwasher I wish I had some light right about now and uh, yeah really <laughs> and so <laughs> anyway I'm exposed to the, the elements a little bit and. I'm basically like outside, not outside, but basically outside. And then the lightning hits and it is so loud. You know, when it, 
when it's close is when you hear the little crackle of the lightning before the thunder. Uh huh. And, 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 and you're like, okay, oh, oh nuts. You're like, oh crap, here it goes because it hasn't flashed yet and you're already. Does it sound like that? No. <laughs> but I was, I was that surprised. Um, <laughs> Anyway, uh, sorry about that. So, uh, th- th- anyway, the lightning goes, I'm like, oh man, it's gonna be loud. And it goes, cop, wow. And then it, it flashes. And I go back inside. I'm like, man, did you hear that? I'm to my wife. And she goes, yeah, it was pretty loud. I'm like, you should have been outside. It was crazy. <laughs> I think our house got hit. Who knows? And so then we were, you know, we came back in. We were finishing up, uh, you were washing dishes. And then I, it, my phone goes, oh, Russ just uploaded a video to Facebook. I'm like, hmm. Huh. Click on that. <laughs> and so then I'm watching. You're like, okay, he's grilling. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, keep going. And I'm like, oh, okay, this has got to be it. Like something happened to him. And so like like two-thirds of the way through, <laughs> you're like, blah, 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 and you get a light show. It's a... <laughs> <laughs> it really was. I mean, like it was the funniest <laughs> thing is like, again, it's mother nature. You can't control that whatsoever. And the, the, like the entire time, like the video itself, like you're right. It's, it's kind of like, it's, I think it's two minutes and 30 seconds. So it, it, it's a little on the long side, but if you do watch it from beginning to end, it's just this hilarious buildup because I'm being silly and, and like acting like I'm like some sort of Mr. Outdoorsman grilling and no matter what the situation is. And this lightning and thunderstorm keeps getting worse and worse to the point where like, I mean, it's literally overhead. And that one line I said where I'm like, and you get a light show. And it was like, you could not have timed it <laughs> any bit. I mean, like, and it wasn't just like a quick flash. It was like, like a strobe fest. It was like purple and blue and white. And it was just like, and then like the whole, like, it's kind of like that. (laughs) They're kind of like, (laughs) yeah, exactly. (laughs) The whole crack of thoom part of it. I mean, you have to understand that was like, the phone does not even begin to capture. It was right overhead. It was so loud. Like it distorted the sound of my eardrums. Like I was like, this thing, this is like, oh, and I think it was just so so funny too in the video because <laughs> at that point I kind of look at the camera and I'm just like, uh, I think I felt my butthole pucker on that one. <laughs> but it was intense. Pucker my butthole. I mean, like I've been I've been living in Texas now for, whoo, twenty years. My goodness, a long time. I, I would say uh, nine or ten years, <laughs> maybe ten or eleven. But like. You know, I, I've I've experienced yeah, my fair yeah, share yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah, thunderstorms. Yeah, this yeah, one sure. though, it had it was quite a doozy in terms yeah. of like the loudness. It was it had some violent thunder going on there. No, yeah, sometimes and and it's usually it's always at night. Also. Yes, it's never during the afternoon. Like you'll you'll have rolling thunder. It's actually kind of nice, uh, but at nighttime, especially when you're getting good sleep, turns out my mother nature's got a sense of humor apparently. But there's been times where I've been passed out just sawing logs, and then there'll be a huge, huge just cub, boom, and it like launches me out of bed, like, I don't work. Just slaps you in the face. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, even though the, the, the blinds are shut, they're still, like, flashing behind those. I'm never going to get to sleep. I have to, like, pull the covers over the like, half of my face. That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. Well, one of the other things that I thought is worthy of note. Yeah. Do you recall the Harley Quinn one to one scale bus that we covered yeah. a few episodes ah, back? That was before we got the old table here. I think actually we had the table, didn't we? Oh, we the hard table, huh? Or did we have the long no, table? We had the long table because I you said you right over there. And she was like on the screen, right? Over right. There. Thank you. you are correct. Yeah. Well, there's another studio by the name of J and D Studios. They're a newer studio out of Korea. And they have been making their mark pretty quickly in the statue world. They've Mm. come out with only about, I would say, four statues to this point. Um, And really only one of those four have actually been released to customers. They're still working on the production uh, version of the prototypes of the other ones. However, they just today came out with a video of their very own Harley Quinn, which Mm. I want you to... 
take a look at, if you look at the screen here, this is how the, the video starts out. And um, they have kind of like a behind the scenes part of the video too that uh, interviews the, the team behind uh, the statue itself. But um, it's really impressive like what they have been able to accomplish with uh, the, this particular statue. And, and I mean, I, I've been following uh, the various types of pop culture statue companies now, I would say almost for about 10 years. And um, they keep getting better and better. They, they, they get more realistic, more accurate. Their techniques keep improving. So this is their entry into the Margot Robbie version of Harley Quinn, which, by the way, became available to pre-order, I think, tonight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it's pretty crazy Like when you look at the, the amount of detail that's in this. This is a one-third scale rendition um, and there, I mean, you have the various companies that have had like a one half scale, one third scale. Um, they, they're now doing a one to ones. I don't know if there is a quarter scale yet or not, but, um, I was really impressed by the, the likeness of this, um, certain shots. Um, I need, these are some of the other ones too, that they've, they've done already as prototypes and they're working on the production values of it. But, um, I've been really impressed by different angles of this because it, I mean, it, it really does look like Margot. And then there are other scenes or other perspectives where I would say it's mostly there. It's like, you know, about 90, 95% there. So what'd you think of that? Well, um, this, she looks real. Um. <laughs> it's crazy how they have taken, like, like if you notice the, the eyeballs themselves, those are glass eyes. And then on top of that, what's crazy is that they have actually sculpted gums, teeth, right. and tongue. Did you see the tongue? I didn't see the tongue, but I mean, seeing the teeth and the eyes was enough because I'm like, wow, that's, uh, I mean, you would think that they were just molding all that plastic into what it is and then throw some color on there that's accurate and then call it good. But they're molding the face and then they're taking extra parts and then they're shoving it in there and <laughs> lining it up right. I'm like, man, they got Margo's teeth right on, you know? Uh, so man, I, yeah, that does look definitely look real. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was super impressed with what they were able to achieve with that. Um, and it does make me wonder also like, um, is the production piece going to be as compelling as the prototype? Cause that's what we saw there was the, the first prototype of the entire thing. And um, uh, furthermore, it makes me wonder, how does this one stack up to the one-to-one -one bust? Um, and I keep going back and forth on that because the the one-on-one -on -one or one-to-one -one bust, um, it was no slouch either, if you recall. I mean, it, it, it literally looked like the top half of Margot Robbie. You're like, oh, there's Margot. But that was just the top half. It wasn't the whole thing. It was not the whole thing. But I, I don't know. Looking at you know, with with the one to one being bigger, there's going to be a whole lot more detail. It's going to look more lifelike. Plus, some of the stuff that we saw, like um, I don't know if you recall, but like the 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 actual arms and hands and stuff, the material they use, you can like push in like that, and it actually responds like real flesh. I mean, it, it's it's pretty impressive what they are able to do these days. That's, that's all I got to say, Steve. Coming soon to a theater near you, it's the topic of the day! The movie trailer impressions. There has been quite a few trailers that have been dropping as of these past couple of weeks, which we always get pretty giddy about, yeah. I must say, around here. We always like to see what's up and coming. So we have curated three trailers that we are going to be checking out 
and giving you our analysis, mm. our reactions, our excitometer reading. <laughs> so, uh, the first trailer I have queued up, Steve. Okay. Is the old trailer. This is directed by M. Night Shyamalan. I, I, I can never... Shyamalan! I can never say... Is that how you say, pronounce his name correctly? M. Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan? Normally, I just say M. Night because I know I will not butcher that part. Sure. Anyway, Good I haven't... Good job. What's that? Good job, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, um, I haven't seen a movie from him since Split. Hmm. Did you see that movie? I don't think I've seen Split. That one's good. Well, very intense. My yeah. favorite movie with him was either as a toss-up between Signs and The Sixth Sense. Right? The Sixth Sense, yeah, that was good too. Yeah, Signs good was good as well. I think The Sixth Sense was his like uh, Village was pretty good yeah, too. Yeah, Village was all right. And then there was Lady in the Water or something like Unbreakable. that. Unbreakable. Unbreakable. That was just I'm not big, too big of a fan of Unbreakable. A lot of people like that one. It's got a following, but I'm just a little slow for me. A little slow for you. Well, let's take a look at his latest offering of old. No kids allowed on the beach? What? I'm not true. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. We never leave each other. Nothing separates us. Are we there yet? You said five minutes. Technically, it's been more than five minutes. Let's just all start slowing down. Wow, you believe I found this online? Well, I guess it's not that secret a beast. Whoa, who would leave this? From the hotel! They're so rusted! What's happening? Found stuff from the hotel in the sand. I don't know. What happened to her? Body has decomposed. How quickly can that happen? Seven years. But she just died. Wait, where are the kids? Trent! Kara! Come here! Hey, have you seen my children? Mom? I'm, I'm right here. Why are you looking at me like that? What's happening to us? My daughter just turned six two weeks ago. Mom! Whatever's happening to us is happening very fast. You have wrinkles. There's something wrong with this beach. What's happening? Mom! 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 I'm scared! We have to get off this beach! People are blacking out going this way. If she makes it to the ledge, she might have a chance. Why is she stopping? Why is she stopping? Kara, wake up! Wake up! They have to know what this place does. I don't know! You're lying! Look! What is that? A message. We never leave each other. Nothing separates us. We're connected to something bigger. Here for a reason. So, what'd you think of that? Well, I'm intrigued, but I think it went on a little bit too long. I a think that at, long. um, I, if the whole movie is going to take place on the beach, I think that's one thing. But um, it seemed like there was a long sequence of uh, like the same short bit of film, I guess. And so they're all wondering why they're on the beach. But I mean, they don't really giving much more story than other than this, this beach is bad. And that you know, which you I, don't oh, want, you don't want them to like you don't want explain it, it in the trailer. You know, but if the trailer is going to be a lot longer, I would have hoped they would kind of give you a little bit more story or a little more like intrigue. But um, I think it was a bit long. I would have liked to them to to tease my imagination a bit more than just show me constantly like people getting scared and this is the beach and 
and you know, okay, you're, you're getting older and your kids are growing up and they shouldn't be here and something's wrong. I'm like, I got it. Okay. What else? Sort of thing. So I, I mean, I'm intrigued about it. I, I just kind of wish the trailer was a bit shorter and a little more to the point. Okay. I thought that, uh, it was very Alfred Hitchcock. Um, in its delivery, which is no surprise because M. Night is known for being inspired by Alfred Hitchcock. I, for one, really like the setting of the beach. I, you know, some movies, they they kind of pride themselves on going all over the world. Like James Bond, you know, you have all these exotic locales that he goes to and that sort of thing. Uh, but there's also something to be said for being in the same place for largely the uh, the entire movie. And so I think that that's really intriguing. And I like the idea of the, the concept of how everyone's getting older at a rapid clip. It kind of reminds me, did you ever watch Stephen King's Thinner? Or did you read the book Thinner? No. It sounds like, and again, I don't know if this is like the exact premise or not, but the premise be- behind the story Thinner is that there's um, this person who... Um, was kind of rude to like this gypsy woman and she like brushes him and just says a single word thinner. And over time, like, and this, this guy, I think, I believe he was like a a pretty obese guy. He starts losing weight and, and, but it gets to the point where like, he's becoming like a living skeleton. And so he's trying to find this woman to like get her to reverse this curse basically. So that was kind of where my mind went to not to say that that's what, this movie is about, but in terms of like the, the, the trailer title being old and, uh, and kind of the, the premise of it, I look forward to it. I think it'd be a fun film for us to go check out. Yeah. So, so hopefully you'll join me in there or you can just come over. The next, uh, I was gonna say film. The next trailer is the protege. Now, what was interesting about this particular trailer is that I believe it is created by some of the folks behind John Wick. <gasps> so I being the big John Wick fan, uh, I'm very much intrigued by this as well. So let's take a look at the protege. Okay. Most people are good. Some people are bad. But you, you're the rare gift. So get in and get out. You can always think on your feet anyway. Not so much tonight. We sent away so many prematurely. Either by my hand through you. We never sent anyone away who didn't have it coming. But we all have to pay for our sins eventually. Meet you downstairs in the bar and hurt your rose up sleeves in your skull t-shirt you say why She's not gonna run. She's gonna lick her wounds and she's coming after us. Someone killed a friend of mine because of a contract he completed years ago. Oh, yeah? Who could be answers? Probably the last thing you ever say. Why don't you just consider it a mystery best left unsolved? You know that I'm no good. You keep this up, you're gonna die. I just wanted to end their life. And anyone standing in my way. You're intrigued by her. Curious. Give us bad manners. No. I'd really like to see you again under different circumstances. These are the best circumstances you'll ever see me in. The protege. What'd you think? I think Samuel Jackson finds himself in these kind of movies quite often, Russ. He does. And he is a delight if I do say so myself in every one of them. 
And it's nice to see Michael Keaton on the screen. Yes. As always. Absolutely. You know, I'm going to hold off. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah, I think they put a... Does he have a lot of makeup on? Did it look like that to you? No. Uh, maybe it was just lighting or something. He looked a little little different. It might be our monitor. Could be the monitor. <laughs> But no, um, so this was, uh, I, I don't know, this was Maggie Q? Maggie Q. Maggie Q. I haven't seen much of her stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks very John Wicky, of course. Wick Wicky. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Transformers. <laughs> um, anyhow, a lot of spectacle, a lot of color, um, a lot of stunts, some gunplay. Mm -hmm. And looks like it's right up your alley. Um, yes. Not a movie you want to watch at low volume. You want the, those gunfire, you want those slaps in the face to come through the TV screen and, yeah, I felt it. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, mainly because of Michael Keaton, actually. That was a nice surprise. Yeah. But you, okay, so, but you see how this one. Kind of showed you a little bit of story and then some action and then here's one venue and then another venue and they kind of start to unfold little bits and pieces to expect in the in the in the movie versus the last one, which is like, here's a beach. Oh my gosh, what's going on? This is not right. What are we gonna do? You know. Well, but again, show me something different. So so what you're saying is is that your interest level is more toward this style of film as opposed to one that is intentional in terms of having basically one set because that type of film actually focuses more on the performances of the people. Like you have performances in this film as well, but at the same time it is, uh, it's, it's a bit different in execution. It's not necessarily that one is better than the other. We now, and we will know that for sure once we actually see the films. We'll True, be able to know. I'm just talking about how they did the trailer. Yeah, yeah, sure. Because like, there's the game that that's coming out where it's just set in one room, and there's a bunch of stuff that like twelve happens. minutes or 12 something. Twelve minutes, yeah. and I'm crazy intrigued about that game. And that's the same kind of thing. It's one set, bunch of stuff happening, but yeah. the way they did it and the way it was done here was you know two different uh, spectacles. Right. Well, I am very much looking forward to this film as well. Um, huge Michael Keaton fan, um, as well as you. Uh, that, that Michael Keaton is is well loved in this family, and also too, I mean Maggie Q, Samuel L. Jackson. I mean that they have a cast that I can get behind. I'm really looking forward to that. Also, the creators of John Wick being behind it, and if you noticed. The director from James Bond Casino Royale is behind. I it. did notice that. Really. So there's like this nice creative concoction going on here, and uh, I am very much looking forward to seeing how this film turns out. And I, I, I think we're going to be entertained. In fact, I would go so far as to say, this is the kind of film that you don't want to watch at home. That you probably should go to the theater in order to get that big theater experience. Mm. But that's just one man's opinion. Yeah, bro. I think that might be something we have to do. I mean, like, like John Wick, for example. Like, I wouldn't want to watch that for the first time at home. I want to go to the theater. I want the big screen experience. Mm. I want the huge, incredible surround sound yeah. experience. There's, there's something definitely to be said about the theater, and there's something else to be said about having a clearer picture and a more directional sound aimed right at you. Having the bathroom close by. Pause, getting <laughs> snacks. You know, I like that. Hermit. I like that. Finally, the third trailer that we're going to be taking a look at is actually the second trailer to come out from Marvel Studios' Shang-Chi. <sighs> so I say, let's take a little gander at that. Throughout my life... The Ten Rings gave our family power. If you want them to be yours one day, you have to show me you are strong enough to carry them. You are a product of all who came before you. The legacy of your family. You are your mother. And whether you like it or not, you are also your father. I 
told my men they wouldn't be able to kill you if they tried. Glad I was right. He's just a criminal who murders people. Be careful how you speak to me, boy. I thought I could change my name. Start a new life. But I could never escape his shadow. My son, you can't run from your past. Is this what you wanted? You got this. Thank you. Shang Chi. <clears throat> Did you recognize the creature at the end there? Was it abomination? Yes, it was. Oh, okay, yeah. Abomination. abomination. Haven't seen that character. Uh, it's been a long time. Long time. Days of old. <laughs> Whispers <laughs> of the dog. <laughs> so, what'd you think of the trailer? Uh, I think it looks very marvelly, marvelicious. Indeed. The enemy's got to be red weapons. Can't be like purple or green. Red is a universal color for evil, Steve. Yeah, Russ. You like red, don't you? I do. Others think it's the color of passion, of love. And they wouldn't be wrong. Uh, you know, but when you have a nemesis, when you have an evil one, that's just their favorite color of choice always. Indeed. Can't be white. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Oof. Anyhow, I digress. Yes, you do. So, um, yeah, no, it looks uh, very, very exciting. It looks like we're going to see some martial arts with some... Um, I'm, I'm glad it's not like, you know, Thor and demigod powery kind of stuff. It's just cool action. Airbender goodness. Airbender goodness kind of, you know, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. What did you think? I thought it was definitely interesting. I haven't read the comic book that it's based off of, so I'm definitely entering into the this next phase of Marvel, as I know you are as well, not really being familiar with these types of characters. So whether it's the mm -hmm. Eternals or Shang-Chi or some of these others that, that they're um, starting to come out with, it is going to be interesting to actually take a look and, and kind of discover this part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I, I was glad about the, the casting choices. I'm not familiar with who these actors are, but mm. having said that, I do think that in terms of the world that they are showing us, I think that they all fit really well. It sounds like it's definitely a character origin story, the, the classic tried and true mm. uh, family dynamics, family conflicts. Perhaps the mother is uh, yeah. the nurturer mm -hmm. and uh, the father is more of the hard ass. Yeah, mom's got a few tricks up her sleeve, though, Russ. Looks like she does. <laughs> Absolutely. She is no one to be trifled with. But you neither know? is Papa. It's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. I am still unclear on the the rings, the ten rings. Ah. It, I, I think the, the full name of the movie is Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. I think that's what it said. Yeah. 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 You know what you could do, though, Russ? What, what can I do, Steve? You could go to your favorite comic book store of choice pick up issue number one i don't think issue number one is available anymore steve and then read it i have a feeling it has been uh sold out for some time now <laughs> russ uh, yes steve i would say try your luck try I my luck i think huh? if you walk in there and be like oh 
Hey, hey you Hi, know you that doing? this new movie coming out? You got <laughs> issue number one? <laughs> oh, you don't? <laughs> well, now I feel awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna <laughs> just gotta go back to my car. Yeah, guy. yeah. Maybe just you, you gotta never bend- saw me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was never here. That doesn't work either. I uh, oh. <laughs> Regardless, uh, though. Next time I go to the comic book store, though, I will inquire about the comic. I will Do find out so. some more information. And I'm looking forward to it because it's coming out in, I believe, what was it September? Yeah. September, early September. Well, <laughs> that's funny. Was it early September or late September, Steve? Ah, well. Was it 923? Maybe we'll or just rewind it to find out. I think it was 93. Oh, I think you're right. Maybe it's 9-3. I was looking. Which trailer are you... Uh, well, I, I guess I should say, which trailer is your favorite? I would say the uh, Michael Keaton trailer, Russ. The um, the second one. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would say that would be the, uh, the fave with the action and the uh, butt kickery. Indeed. I would... Uh, I'm looking forward to that one the most. I, I mean, this was a nice trio of trailers. Mm-hmm. I would like to see all of them. But as far as the trailer by itself and its own entity, minus all like the what whatever the movie may behold, um, I would say the trailer uh, number two. I would say I agree with you. I think that out of all three there now, having said that, I'm looking forward to all three films based off of their trailers. Yeah. And I think I think you are too. That's what I just said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, yeah. confirming. Mm-hmm. Reaffirming. Mm-hmm. Removing any doubt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, I, I'm definitely looking forward to when all these movies come out. And I'm just, I'm happy that we're getting back into the swing of things as it applies to various movies coming out yeah. and the trailers that are going to be following it. And I have a feeling Hollywood has a deluge of different movies that ha- they have not been able to release as well as other ones that have been in production and whatnot. So it's, uh, you know, I- I'm, I'm happy. I'm really, really happy. And I can't wait. Honestly, I can't wait to go back with you to the movie theater. I honestly miss having that experience because, like I said, there are certain films. It's like, yeah, I could easily watch from home and and have that convenience. But at the same time, too, it's just nice to, like, get out. Like, go out and have that theater experience. Yeah, it is nice to get. The one thing that just pisses me off a little bit about um, at home is that everybody has the you, you're, 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 so dependent on the internet working like it should work. <laughs> and so when it go, when you're like, when you're really into the movie and then it just, you get the three loading dots. Like, oh, and then you go, what's, what's going on? Do we have to reset the router? Is it the neighbor? Do we have other stuff on in the house we need to turn off? Like, I just want to watch the movie. That's what I can't stand. I understand. I understand what you can't stand. Has its pluses and its minuses. There you go. That wraps up this episode of Joygasm. Thanks for hanging out with us. If you enjoy this episode, we invite you to check out patreon.com slash joygasm. You'll enjoy exclusive perks and early access to the show. Not to mention it financially helps us continue doing what we love to do. Also, make sure that you tickle that subscribe button. Perhaps give the old heave-ho to the notification bell. That way you won't miss a single episode of Joygasm that drops once a week. You also need to look, do a search for Joygasm TV on social media. You will be happy that you did. Last but not least, do a search for Joygasm TV on Twitch to see us stream our gaming adventures live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. We will look forward to all, well, yeah, always seeing you next week.